Today, I'm going to show you how to <clears throat> Today, I'm going to introduce Newton's Today, I'm going to introduce Newtonian gravity. So previously, we've seen that the force of gravity equals mg. And this is true-ish. This is true near the surface of whatever thing is exerting that gravity, whether it's the Earth or the Moon. So this is true near the surface. But what about when you are not near the surface? So in that case, we look for a different force, and it looks like this. G M1 M2 over r squared r hat direction. And so down here is a picture of what that looks like. So r is the distance between the center of masses of mass one and mass two. The r hat vector points along the direction between the center of masses of mass one and mass two. And depending on which mass we're looking at, for example, uh, mass two is gonna feel a force in this direction, so r hat points that way. And mass one feels a force pointing to the right, so r hat points in that direction. This g is the gravitational constant. And it is 6 point g is 6.67 times 10 to the minus 11. And its units are Newton meters squared per kilogram squared. Or if you didn't want Newtons to be in there, we know that Newton, Newtons are units of um, kilogram meter per second squared. And so this gravitational constant either has units of Newton meter squared per kilogram squared or kilogram, oh, not kilogram, meter cubed per kilogram second squared. So these are all the same units. Okay, so this is our Newtonian gravitational force. And what it's telling us is that any two masses that are next to each other are going to exert a gravitational force on each other. And you can see this in the Cavendish experiment. So in the Cavendish experiment, you take two very lightweight balls, hang them from strings, fairly close to each other. And when you release them from rest, 
you'll see that they, and I'm drawing this very exaggeratedly. But you'll see that the two balls will attract each other because they are both experiencing a gravitational attraction towards each other. Okay, so this is, we can verify this experimentally. And this also looks very similar to um, Coulomb's law, if you've done electromagnetism. Um, and it's derived from a very simple potential, which we'll talk about now. So we've seen that we can go from a force to a potential energy because the potential energy is related to force using this equation. And I'm going to call this dr because that's going to make the integral easy. So if we plug in this value for the force of gravity, now we're taking the derivative of r squared with respect to r. So the left-hand side just becomes potential energy. The integral of one over r squared is negative one over r. So this just becomes g m1 m2 over r. And remember that potential energy is a scalar, so there's no direction associated with this. Okay. So now we have a force of gravity, g m1 m2 over r squared. And we have a potential energy due to gravity minus g m1 m2 over r. Now we can do uh, similar physics that we have been doing, like we can set up a free body diagram and have this kind of gravity be one of our forces, or we can do um, conservation of energy problems where this is one of our potential energies, um, but something that we have to be cautious of is that this force is now dependent on the radius that you are away from the mass that is exerting the gravitational force. And why that matters is that if we compare with the gravitational force near the Earth, mg, here mass was constant and g was a constant that we just used for 9.8. So what is different is that the force of gravity it, that we use for Newtonian gravity is not constant. It changes the farther away or the closer you get from something. And so because it's constant, or the acceleration is not constant, because the force is not constant, the acceleration is not constant. And because the acceleration is not constant, we can't use the kinematic equations like we had been doing before. So just a word of caution that the, if you did try to set up your Newton's law problem and you found 
some acceleration, you have to be aware that that acceleration is not constant. And while we're comparing these two gravitational forces, let's see if they're actually equal. Because near the surface of the Earth, they better be equal, or either we've derived a wrong Newtonian gravity, or we've been using F equals mg wrong this whole time. So let's see if they are equal. So in our picture, we'll say that m1 is the Earth, and m2 is just some object sitting on the Earth. Maybe I'll make this picture bigger. So here's M1, which is the Earth. And here's M2, which is some object sitting on the Earth. So this is going to be M2, which is the object sitting on the Earth. So we'll see that that mass goes away. And now we need g m1 over r squared, where r is the radius of the Earth plus the radius of m2. But if you compared the radius of the Earth to the radius of whatever object was sitting on the Earth, the radius of the Earth is going to dominate. So. If you plug in your numbers, so g was 6.67 times 10 to the minus 11. The mass of the Earth is 5.972 times 10 to the 24 kilograms. The radius of the Earth is 6.378 times 10 to the 6 meters. So if you calculate this, plug this all into your calculator, you get 9.8 meters per second squared, which is the gravitational acceleration that we had been using the whole time. So it checks out. So these two equations are the same. The gravitational force that we were using close to the surface of the Earth to do stuff like kinematics and projectile motion, and the gravitational force for uh, Newtonian gravity. So next we'll uh, talk about the escape velocity, and that's the velocity that you would need to escape a, an object's gravitational pull. So let's say we want to leave surface of mass M1. Or of the planet or whatever surface you want to leave. If we look at conservation of energy, if we are on the surface of the planet, we would have some potential energy due to gravity. And if we want to leave the planet, we need some initial kinetic energy. And now the final picture. So initially, we're standing on the planet. And in the final picture, we're off in space, and the planet is nowhere to be seen. 
So another way to think about this is we're now a radius r approaching infinity away from the planet. And so if you plugged g m1 and 2 over r, if you plugged in here the limit as r approaches infinity, you would get 1 over infinity, which would just be 0. So we won't have any final energy, any final potential energy due to gravity. And let's say that we, we picked just enough velocity to get to um, infinitely far away. So we'll have no kinetic energy at the end either. OK. So now we have negative g m1 m2 over r plus 1 half m2 v squared equals 0. So this negative sign, so we'll add the g m m r to both sides. And now we're going to cancel out the masses. And we're solving for velocity because we wanted to know how much velocity we would need to escape the surface. So you would multiply by 2 and take the square root of both sides. And you would get this, which is your escape velocity. Okay. In the case of the Earth, M1 would be the mass of the Earth, and R would be the radius of the Earth. So now that we've derived the escape velocity, which is V equals square root of 2G, which is the gravitational constant, M which is whatever mass we're trying to escape, and r, which is the radius of either the radius of the thing that we're trying to escape or the radius that we are currently away from the center of mass. So this escape velocity would work, say, if you were trying to move further away from the planet, but you were already in orbit. OK, so let's calculate what the escape velocity is for the Earth. So this is escape velocity. So what is Earth's escape velocity? OK, so V equals square root of 2 times gravitational constant is this. The mass of the Earth is 5.97 times 10 to the 24 kilograms. The radius of the Earth is 6.378 times 10 to the 6 meters. And if you calculate that, you'll get the escape velocity for the Earth. Eleven thousand one hundred and seventy four meters per second, approximately. So, this is how fast you would need to be going to um, escape from the Earth's gravitational pull. This has been a Dr. Strassbau lecture. Peep the credentials. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring the bell for notifications.